بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته continuing from our series of the female companions around the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in our last series we're speaking about the slander that was made against Aisha may Allah be pleased with her what is known as the story of Ifq that came in Surah An-Nur we stopped at Aisha did not know what the people had been saying about her. She did not know this rumor which was spreading that reached the ears of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The time that Aisha found out was one when she was with her parents. She stayed with her parents twenty days. In these twenty days, she was ill, and one of these days, on one of these nights, she decided to go and relieve herself. And there's a woman with her that was helping her to go far in order for Aisha to relieve herself. When Aisha was walking with this woman to relieve herself, this woman tripped over her own cloth and she almost fell down. At this point, the woman say, Ta'isa, mistah. She said, may mistah, yeah, it was a form of a curse. That may he be destroyed, may he be miserable. Aisha was shocked. She said, how evil is that which you say about this companion? How can you say this about a companion of the Prophet? Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Who fought in the battle of Badr? How could you say this about him? And even more shocking was the person that was making this statement. Do you know who the person that was making this statement was? She's the mother of Mistah. She's his own mother of this companion. So Aisha was shocked. So she said to Aisha, Why do you defend him? Have you not heard what he's been saying about you? Because some of the people that are spreading this evil rumor, this untrue issue, this if, this slander, was this companion. So Aisha said, what is being said about me? When she informed the Aisha what the people have been saying, that she might have committed a lewd act with Safwan, Aisha almost collapsed. Her eyes began to flow with tears, gushing with tears. She could not believe it. She went back to her mother, blaming her, saying, why didn't you tell me of what the people have been saying about me? Why? Aisha, it was said, she, did, she could not eat. She could not drink. She was just constantly crying. Constantly crying. At this point, the Prophet ﷺ was also silent on this issue. But the silence of the Prophet ﷺ is not that the Prophet ﷺ believed what the people had been saying. Because the Prophet ﷺ stood on the mimbar and said, What is wrong with people that they harm me concerning my family? Meaning Aisha. What is wrong with the people that they say about a man? Meaning Safwan. The one that was accused of committing this lewd act with Aisha, the one they were spreading the rumor about, that they say this about this man we know nothing about except goodness. What is wrong with the people? So the Prophet ﷺ took this stance on the mimbar. After this, the Prophet ﷺ went to some of his companions. From amongst them, Usama ibn Zayd, one of the most beloved of companions to the Prophet ﷺ, and the most sincere to him. And he said to him, what do you think about this issue? And he said to the Prophet ﷺ, that Ya Rasulullah, Anta a'lamu nas bi Aisha. You're the one that know Aisha the most. However, we do not know anything about Aisha illa khair, except for goodness. After this, he went to Ali ibn Abi Talib, may Allah be pleased with him. And he said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he asked him to ask her maid, the maid of Aisha. The maid of Aisha said, Ya Rasulullah, we do not know anything about this pure innocent girl except for goodness. After this, it was said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to Umar ibn Khattab. And Umar ibn Khattab, he said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Bidori an as'aluka ya Rasulullah. I should be in the position to ask you, Man zawajaka iyaha? Who's the one that married you to Aisha? It was said that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Allah, it was Allah. Because the revelation came for the Prophet ﷺ to marry Aisha. After this, the Prophet ﷺ waited for revelation, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to declare her innocence from above the seven heavens. The Prophet waited and waited. There was no revelation. And the big people began to speak more until the Prophet ﷺ went to Aisha's house. And he said, Ya Aisha, O Aisha, if what the people are accusing you of is false and you're innocent, Allah would declare your innocence from above the seven heavens. And if you've done anything wrong, ittaqillah fa Allah wa tubi ilallah and repent to Allah. When Aisha heard this from the mouth of the Prophet, it was like a saiqa, 
yani missiles, tragedy, calamities was just falling on top of her head. It was said that she wept uncontrollably. She couldn't even feel the tears coming out of her eyes. She just kept weeping. She was weeping and she looked at her parents. She said to them, would you not answer the messenger of Allah? She looked at her mother and her father. They said, we do not, want, we do not know what to answer the messenger of Allah. She said, and the whole room was quiet. The only person that was speaking is Aisha. Because in those 20 days, it's the first time the Prophet is sitting with her. She said, at that age, at that time, I didn't know much of the Quran. She said, I could only say, the statement of Aisha was, I said, I only say, as the father of Yusuf, he said. She could not remember his name, or she did not know his name was Yaqub. She said, I could only say what he said. Fasabrun Jamil. That verily, patience is beautiful. Wallahu al musta'an ala ma tasifun. Allah has the ability, or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala musta'an has the ability upon that which you accuse me of, or that which you're describing, or what the people are describing with me, with me with. After this, immediately in the house that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said this to her, after the statement of her, immediately, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam started to move in an unusual way. Until the people in the house became scared, but Aisha she recognized this. What this was, this was wahi revelation coming to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. She put a pillow under the head of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam became almost unconscious. He was not there with them. Then he came back around. When he came back around, he said, Bushra, Bushra, Ibshiri, Ibshiri. Glad tidings, glad tidings on Aisha. Your innocence has come from above the seven heavens. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, he revealed verses in the Quran that will recite until the day of judgment, declaring the innocence of Aisha from above the seven heaven. Allah Ta'ala says, those people that came with ifk, that, this group of people that came with this ifk, Allah Ta'ala says, do not think, la tahsabuhu sharran lakum, do not think it was bad for you, bal, in fact, khayrun lakum, it was better for you. And Allah Ta'ala said, everyone who took part in this, they have their share or their wages of sin. After this, the place of Aisha, a status restored in the heart and the mind of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and likewise in the hearts of all the Muslims. In the, whole, the, the hearts of all the Muslims. After this incident came Fathul Makkah, the conquest of Mecca, and many other conquests. During the conquest of Mecca, and after the conquest of Mecca, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, during the last pilgrimage, revealed, was revealed to him the saying of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, Al-Yawm Akmaltu Lakum Dinakum. Today I've completed my, your religion for you. وَأَتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَتِي And I've completed my favor upon you. I've perfected religion for you. When Allah Ta'ala revealed this to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the farewell pilgrimage, the eyes of Abu Bakr was filled with tears. And when the people say, why are you crying, Abu Bakr? He said, Me, this means the time or the death of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is coming. And true it was, the death of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was coming. And the Prophet والسلام, became extremely ill. And from all the houses he chose to be nursed in, he said, he asked all his wife, please allow me to be nursed in the house of Aisha. And Aisha was the one that nursed the Prophet والسلام, He passed away. And he was buried in the room of Aisha. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with her. To show one the virtues of Aisha, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with her. After the death of the Prophet والسلام, Aisha became known amongst the companions, was one of the most knowledgeable amongst them. Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, was the one that related most to the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa From her virtues, it was said she was extremely generous. It was said by uh, Abdullah ibn Zubair that he's never seen women that were more generous, more than Asma and Aisha. It was said that Aisha once, a hundred thousand dirham was sent to her. This 100,000 dirham that was sent to her, she gave it all out in charity. And in this particular period, Aisha was fasting. She gave out everything to the extent her maid said to her, Ya Aisha, her servant said to her, you could at least have left behind a dirham for us to buy meat for you to break your fast. Aisha was known for a zuhud, abstinence from the dunya. She used to abstain from the dunya. It was said that Aisha, after the death of the Prophet wasallam, she never ate to her fill. She said, how could I eat till I'm full up? When two months 
used to pass in the house of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and fire mean there will be no cooking in the house of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They used to survive on water and dates. She said, Aisha, the Prophet's household never went two days in a row and their stomach was full. So Aisha continued upon this, abstinent from the dunya. Aisha was known for her worship. It was said that once Aisha radiallahu anha was in prayer and she was received, reciting the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah At-Tur where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the believer saying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you had saved her from a terrible punishment that you saved her from Adab al-Samum the terrible punishment and she kept reciting this the person that witnessed Aisha doing this he said, I watched the mother of the believer in Salah until I became tired and bored of her reciting this. I went to the market, I came back and I found her still praying, reciting these verses and crying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aisha radiallahu anha was known to be one who fasted a lot. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with her. Aisha, from her virtues, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with her, is that the Sahaba, after the death of the Prophet they used to Consult, consult, consolidate with her in a lot of issues Ask her opinions in a lot of issues Even in the Caliphate of Uthman They used to come to her And ask her opinion And the Caliphate of Ali Likewise they used to come to ask her opinions This is Aisha the daughter of Abu Bakr As-Siddiq May Allah be pleased with her On the 17th of Ramadan In the 58th year after Hijrah Aisha may Allah be pleased with her Became ill and this illness, with this illness, the mother of the believer, Aisha, Siddiqah, the truthful one, the daughter of the truthful one, the beloved of the beloved of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, succumbed to this illness and she passed away. The major, the Sahaba, they prayed over the janazah of Aisha. She passed away after Salatul Isha. Immediately after Isha, the people prayed with her and they went to go and bury Aisha. Abu Huraira, who led the Salah, he said, I've never seen a night where I've seen so much people come out in my whole life as the night we pray janazah for Aisha. May Allah Ta'ala be pleased with her. Until our next episode, inshallah Ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.